this, there's a very, very real possibility that this could end up cutting out. I've been using it a lot. Well, because I've been recording my voiceovers in the closet. Oh. <laughs> Not secretly, of course. Yeah. I've just been at physically recording voiceover auditions. It's okay. You don't have to clarify In yourself. a closet. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Everybody, good afternoon, good evening. How you doing? And welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast, the best podcast you'll never know. I am your host G, and with me is Anthony and the very well dressed Vast. Hey, what's up? Okay. I don't know if he's kind of did me dirty on that intro there, but whatever. You and I look like we're about to be fans at whatever show he's putting on. Well, I don't know. We have to fucking suit up for this. Well, I don't think we were planning on it, but he decided to come from work, which entitles him to wear a suit and a tie. Yarp. And we look like the fanboys of whatever special he's about to put on, and we're just going to sit on the side and root. Looks like Vass is going to teach us how to live. Yeah. It's almost like Vass's new groove has evolved. Perhaps. Yeah. That was actually... I, I was surprised how many people messaged me to ask for pictures of about your new groove and like I was supposedly how you looked and all that stuff because you hyped it up so fucking much well, yeah course. no kidding <laughs> Listen, I was listening too be like what the hell like how, how does this man look yeah no I the thing is this you have to notice the little things and that's what I've been trying to do it's those little differences well so, I usually have a bushy ass beard like well, it's out more exactly like which is why out, I noticed trimmed it. out quite a bit yeah nice lines all yeah that jazz. do you want to do a quick yell yelp Okay, there we go. Sorry. If for all those that probably haven't paid attention or you didn't notice it, Bass's microphone has been fucked for like five weeks, maybe six. Sure, I don't know. Yeah. Man, I'm editing it and yours sounds super low. And then I can't crank it up too much because then it, I don't know, it's all crank distorted. That thing, soldier boy you just wait. I, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I've got a beat on three new microphones, so they're going to be good. Got the beat. Uh, the only reason I know they're going to be beat good. Beat that beat up. Well, the reason I know they're going to be good is because I did a podcast with another guy and he had them. Was that the uh, story of you? The story of you. And his sound quality is very good. Mm -hmm. So I hope everyone's having a good time wherever you're listening to this from, to, whatever. Um, As you all know, uh, (laughs) SAS Podcast Network and Conexus plugin is right now. And then we can go on to your regularly scheduled program. Did you guys see the Super Bowl? Uh, No. I saw the last quarter. That was a good quarter. Like fully, yeah. I kind of just in and out. Other than that, but I watched it fully for the first time. Um, we had gone to Bonzo's, mm-hmm. and it was cool because the booth had the TV in the booth, so we didn't have to like turn around to see anything. The only shitty thing is, is that they had it on two different networks, so sometimes a commercial from the other one would be going, but yeah. it wasn't the one from ours, and uh, it caught us off guard a bit. <laughs> Good game. Hmm. I'm not a huge sports person. You all know we are not a sports podcast, but uh, it was a good game. The halftime show was hot. Unbelievable. Yeah, muy caliente. You know, the, you know what the thing is? It wasn't that it was just muy caliente. Yeah. It was that, of course. It was the it was just a really entertaining show. Like me, Soph, Pete and Effie were just staring at it. And the girls loved it way more than we did. Mm-hmm. And oh, and we just like well, it was just a really good performance. Well they did they did it right in the sense that they kind of went through the ages and they did all their songs, like so the montage, good. like, and it's just the best way to do it. And I think they hit everything. And I, I had no idea that was J Lo's daughter. Me neither. And she after. has a good pipes on her. Oh, she was so good. Yeah. Uh, her and Mark Anthony's daughter. Yeah. No, it was uh, it was a it was an unbelievable performance. Mm-hmm. It was so fun to watch, uh, and it had nothing to do with the attire, the whatever, because. Mm-hmm. We've seen Maroon 5 half naked on there, and he yeah. sucked, okay? Yeah. And even, like, so f- I remember her saying, like, eh, it was fine, because I remember watching that one. Okay. Uh, no, it was just a really good performance. The funny thing is, because uh, we're going to go through a lot of stuff, but I want to touch base on a couple of things right now. Did you, oh, you said you liked it? You didn't see it. I saw no. I did watch the halftime show, because I just, like, in and out. I don't, I yeah. don't like, I don't care for football. Yeah, fair. But I just found it super funny. Because, like, with all these memes I've been posting, I found out lots of, like, 
I'll call them Karens for the demographic. Lots of Karens are very upset with the show. Of course. Mm. Saying like how it's uh, too sexualized. But it's also like, again, Maroon 5 was half naked and nobody gave a shit because yeah. a guy. Well, this is yeah, what makes really it super last fucking year, funny. Last year, not so much this year, huh? <laughs> this, this is what makes it super fucking funny. Uh, and I'm going to bring up two of these things. So apparently there's a podcast called Pass the Salt. And there's this Christian activist on there. And he's trying to sue the NFL because apparently... The crotches and pole dancing are keeping him from getting into the kingdom of heaven, and it's and they say that there's they're peddling porn. Clearly, this man has never seen porn, or he's seen so much, or just the wrong kind of porn. Like, yeah. is, he, is he sure he's watching porn? <laughs> yeah. Um, could I go into a courtroom and say viewing what you put on the screen put me in danger of hellfire? He asked his audience. And then there's this stuff: are we going to protect our children and all that shit? It's like. Maroon 5 was up there half fucking naked. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just so funny. because Christian extremists are just stupid. Oh, my God. Like the Pokemon yeah. bullshit, the Harry Potter bullshit. Oh, man. Like, it's a, a shut little, up. That's a it's little so much. fucking if dumb. If you cannot, like, if you feel offended by, like, media, literally turn off the TV. Nobody Basically, forced this Christian to watch the full 14-minute yeah. halftime show. You but know it's halftime. Lord knows he did watch the full 14 minutes, and he enjoyed it. <laughs> what a fucking idiot, man. Um... And he says, I tuned in to watch a football game. I didn't tune in to watch a porn show. The football game was playing, and if you felt that what you saw was porn, you could have turned it off. That's what halftime is. The football happens in the first and second and third and fourth quarter. So I don't know what the fuck this guy's deal is. And apparently there is another, uh, some other fucking guy that's looking to do that too. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's like a pastor or something. Anyways, I thought that was just so... F oh, this guy. Uh, Ohio pastor threatens to sue NFL over lewd Super Bowl 2020 halftime show. Um, yeah. Oh, I think it's the same guy. Oh, it's no, it's the same, same guy. I guess he's a pastor, too. Pornography called it sewage. Uh, he said he pumped ho porn into our homes. They didn't tell us that they were going to do it. They put no warning on the screen before J-Lo started her strip club act. <laughs> um, yeah. Just dumb. Just fucking dumb. So dumb. Um, yeah. Anyways, I thought I'd bring that up. Trailers, pretty good. Nothing, mm -hmm. like, amazing, but we actually got our first shots of Falcon mm -hmm. and WandaVision and one little 10-second thing from Loki saying yeah. that he's going to burn this shit to the ground, mm -hmm. which is pretty much what Michael Scott wanted to do the whole time. Yeah. So, I mean, That's... I think it was, like, in season six. Hmm. Uh, what did you guys think? Uh, Loki looks a lot like Joker. Like, just, like, not just, like, just straight up in terms of look. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. I think I got like that vibe a lot with the long hair. Like he's always had long hair. No, but like just the way he was in the prison uniform, just like lighting. I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's just a notice. Uh, okay. Falcon is what I'm like, most excited for. Mm -hmm. Wandavision looks much better than I thought it would be. I did not give a shit about that at all. Interesting. Also, uh, Mandalorian got pushed up to fall 2020 release date. <laughs> yeah, because the rest of these fucking release dates are not until like almost the next year, and well, they need shit. I think it's gonna be Falcon, Mandalorian, Wandavision, then Loki. Wow. They definitely need content. So, like, Loki is still 2020. Yeah. 2021. 2021? Yeah. Like, start January. I don't even know, but, like, it was, they announced us very early. It's surprising. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, I loved, I sent you the thing where Paul Bettany was saying, like, WandaVision is mm -hmm. fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, in a good way. Yeah. And that fucking trailer was unreal. I loved it. It looked it so very interesting. good. And I can't wait to see what they do with it, like. Oh, man, I I think it's going to be unreal. Mm. And rumor is that the villain of that is actually the tie-in villain for Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange yeah. which I know at one point we had said we don't want to have to watch. Either we did or somebody else. No, we you did. did. <laughs> we did. Okay. Where it's like, we don't want to watch all of this stuff just to see the next one. Mm. Now that I saw the fucking trailer. Well, now like, it looks oh, good. Because at first I, I was expecting like the Netflix not Daredevil like the other shit Netflix shows yep. like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I'm like sure. I don't fucking want to watch those yeah. but like yeah. you saw Mandalorian I'm like okay that's pretty good mm -hmm. Falcon looks really good yeah. this looks really good I'm like okay fine like as long as it's good short like the seasons are short it's not like yeah. 16 episode long seasons hour each because those are if they do 8 episodes I think that's perfect half an hour no not half an hour like let's say 40 minutes each mm -hmm. 45 minutes that's your that's it mm -hmm. that's all you need to do now, question for you, because I know you were pretty outspoken when we said, like, I don't want to have to watch all this. Oh, yeah. Had they not said it, would you have not watched it anyway? 
No, I probably would have watched it. That's what I'm think, saying. Like, I, but the it's thing just is, one of those things like that they put it in your brain that you have to, otherwise you're not going to know what's going to go on or it all ties in. Yeah, I think you would have watched it regardless, being a fan of the genre and what they've done so far. Sure. You probably would have watched it anyway, and then let's say you found out about it after. It's like, oh yeah, I should have watched this in order to understand this, and be like, oh okay, that's good. That's a fair question. Um, I have no idea. I think for, mm. <coughs> excuse me. I think for me it was the idea of. If it's Ages of Shield mm-hmm. or whatever the, the yeah, those the other one, the other Netflix shows, yeah, the other Netflix shows, <coughs> sorry, or whatever shows they were gonna do, yeah. and maybe because after Endgame, I just was like, okay, yeah. I'm good now for a while, yeah, and now I see this trailer just, and I'm like, oh, this is pretty interesting, and then I hear the synopsis of like they're actually stuck in a world that the villain has created, mm. which I think is even is even more interesting. It mm-hmm. makes sense as to why Vision is there, mm-hmm. which means that That's my right. guess is Wanda is trapped inside her mind and yeah. she's living these scenarios out, but it's like this total internal battle and she's actually like in a room with a straitjacket or something. And but the she person's has kids. Is... That's the thing I'm like, confused about because she actually has kids in the show. Mm-hmm. And those two kids are actually in the comics. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know, like, it'd be weird if she has these kids that are going to be characters in the future. So I don't know exactly how it is. I don't know Matt if Vision's Jason. actually <laughs> dead. Because I think that, I think from memory, the Doctor Strange villain is called Nightmare. Okay. So I sense. assume that ties into this because she's obviously in this, like, Assume. crazy state where she doesn't know what the fuck's real or not. She's in the Matrix. But she's also, this. if it ties into the multiverse... This could be that this is a vision that's still alive and somehow comes back. And are those yeah. kids her biological kids, or are they going to be those like... Those are Vision Wanda's babies. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be hard when he's dead. Also, by the way, they, they released this deleted scene from Infinity War where Vision actually rips Corvus Glaive's heart out. Oh, yeah. I, I was heard like, about it. They, I've never actually saw it, though. Why the fuck didn't they have that in the movie? I just saw the Professor Hulk one where he was, like, it was at the very end. And I think it was when in the Hulkbuster suit when they were arguing, and then he would have seen Professor Hulk, and then he oh, saw like Nat. I want to see that, but it wasn't very good. No, it was just kind of like very awkward. Like she's trying to calm him down. She's like, "Oh, he's like, hey, Nat," and they're like, "Oh, you can speak." And he's like, right. "Yep, I did the brains and brawn thing." And I'm like, "No, I think it was better in Endgame, honestly." But. I also saw the Thor Ragnarok deleted scene where it was in the alley where they okay, saw, saw Hobo, Anthony Hopkins, which the way that they did it was way better. Yeah, I don't think it would have tied as nicely with their confrontation with Hela and stuff like that if they kept the alley one. Well, it was the one from the trailer. Yeah, like the original like trailer see. had it that where scene. Thor oh, threw it? the hammer and the music was going. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when it started to kick in. That's where they got that from. But they changed it from that to the CGI Norway, I believe, scene. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Norway better, honestly. Mm-hmm. I, I I thought it was it was a better choice. After seeing what they did, because Anthony Hopkins was pretty manic and like, I'm Anthony Hopkins, like it's crazy, Ragnarok's coming or whatever. Yeah. May, obviously, because we saw it, if we yeah. saw it in the it, like, if that was the cut that they went to, we saw it in the movie, we'd probably be fine with it. Mm-hmm. But we've just lived with this for so long. Yeah. Um. So Falcon and Winter Soldier looked really good. Mm-hmm. Um. Baron Zemo's back. Yep. And. Uh, I like how it opened. You know, he's throwing the shield and everything. And then they showed the other Captain America high fiving a dude at what looked also to be a Super Bowl game. Yeah, yeah. Of sorts. Um, but yeah, and he's like chasing the guys in the squirrel suits. And then he's in his uh, X. What's it called? An X Wing suit? Or an, uh, uh, whatever. His Falcon. It's the Falcon. Whatever his Falcon. Yeah. Uh, that looked good. I mean, I miss Bucky with long hair, but, you know, dude looks good. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we have? The Sonic trailer, I thought that one looked fun. Did you I see that? I actually didn't see that I one. I did not. No. Was there a new one? Or I might have seen there was like a, a Super Bowl one. Was it a, like just a short 30-second one? Yeah, okay. I, I think they all were because yeah. of how fucking expensive it is to do. It's like $5.6 million for 10 seconds or something like that. Jeez. Or us, half an hour spot or ha- half a second spot, whatever, half a minute spot. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So um, next year, look out for the F-words ad on uh, Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Started going funny. <laughs> Listen, if we win the lottery, it's happening. If I win the lottery and it's like fifty million dollars, I'm buying a Super Bowl ad, <laughs> and I don't even care if it's like I want them to work out the pricing for just a second, and it's just <laughs> gonna be F, boom, done, Similar. and then, and oh. then a blimp, and then the blimp is gonna be showering the entire stadium with F word logos and F word condoms. Well then. No? Are you going to print the slogan on the condom itself? For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, not on the condom, on okay. the wrapper. Yeah. 
for them either. No? I don't know. I don't know. Dropping a bunch of condoms on a bunch of kids is a good idea. Yeah. You know there's more than just kids that attend the Super Bowl. Yeah, but it's like, they're there. It's called safe sex. Age the effort. The effort promotes safe sex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Ridiculous oh, Fast 9 trailer, another one. Fuck I it. I saw that at the movies yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't, you weren't here last week. Dumb. I don't know. I thought it was fucking stupid. Oh, I don't know what the... F- okay, my, one thing, because they go off the mountain or whatever, and uh, they somehow... Yeah, with Tarzan the, with a car. Yeah. yeah. And then they're just both sitting it's there magnets. calmly. They're just sitting there like straight face, just bitch. going, and then boom, and that was it. And I'm like, yeah. no way anybody would have that reaction. Like, I know oh. this is a ninth movie, and they're kind of used to this shit, but like, there's <laughs> no way you'd be sitting there straight face, just... Yeah, whatever. Well, and then I send that fucking post where they're doing ten and uh, number ten is going to be two, two parts. parts. Yeah, like fuck right off. I can't wait. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it was so funny. I saw a meme uh, and I forgot to share it, but it was like at this point they might as well just fight the Avengers next. <laughs> it's Seriously. Like, yeah. Seriously, like be they should have they should have come through the portal with their fucking rice rockets and and turbochargers and underglow and just yeah. fought well, no, no, they on your a, left the diesel have. comes out with his face that he always has in every shot of the trailer and every changes. shot like he, he walks he looks like he just smells the bad fruit every gets time. in the car oh I that would be meta yeah i forgot <laughs> vin diesel was in the mcu <laughs> that would that would be very interesting to see and then uh, vin diesel in. and groot yeah of sorts we're yeah. family i am groot yeah yeah which exactly essentially him just saying we're family again um I'm going to get to more Fast and the Furious stuff because I think at this point I'm just going to have fun just shitting on the movie. Oh, yeah. uh, Altered Carbon, that was a teaser that came out. Mm-hmm. If you guys haven't seen Altered Carbon, it's actually really good. Uh, I yeah. did. It was one of the last reviews that I did for the channel, and um, it's a very interesting presence. Presence. Very interesting premise. Um, I like Joel Kinnaman in it. He was actually quite good. I always found him like really bland. Like in mm-hmm. Suicide Squad, he was really bland, and on most of the stuff that he's in, he's very bland. Mm-hmm. This one seemed to work very well, and he was jacked as shit, and he was very good in it. Yeah. Um, now Anthony Mackie's in it, which also kind of works with the theme, even though it's like it's too bad that he's, Joel Kinnaman's not going to be in it. Mm. Um, it looked fine. It was a quick teaser. But yeah. I'm excited I'm, for it. It's been a while, though, since the first one came out. Like, we're talking a year years? and a half, maybe two years. Is it longer? No. No? It oh. came out, yeah, I want to say like two years ago. When did I stop? Right. I literally watched it as the second it came out on Netflix because I was looking for something to review. But, uh, no, it was good. I um, haven't seen it. I still need to finish. I like saw you season one, and it was super good. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to wait till I started season two again so I don't get burnt out. We finished, Soph and I finished season two. Season one was stupid good. I actually really liked it a lot. It was. There were some points where, and and season two almost doubled down, doubles down on it. It it kind of dove into the teeny bopper drama thing, like what I like to call the Twilight drama thing. Like Riverdale that is un- shit. Kind of, and I've only seen one episode of Riverdale, so I can't say. I also have never seen Twilight, so I can't say. But it's I'm, it's a, kind of what I think it would. I be. I haven't seen Twilight either, but I get the vibe. You're yeah. Uh, season two was fine. Chris D'Elia is in it, and I think he's funny. I just think he's not a good actor. Um, but season two, because it's in L.A., really doubled down on a lot of commentary that they just kept going and going with and going with. Um, yeah, they they were just... I think they used the word privilege like five times an episode. Like like white privilege? White privilege, oh my mansplaining, God. privilege, mansplaining, privilege. It's like, fuck off like come on sorry i kind of zoned out there you season guys? two. Oh, you okay i yeah. haven't seen it yet um that's a it's shame man season kinda, one was so good but season one kind of did that too where she was like oh i don't want you to need your man's yeah but that but was the was... character though right that was like she was kind of like that was the essence of sure. the character so i didn't care enough but like that's yeah i okay. will say your you saying that it was like dexter i was like yeah okay. very much they did i wish they would have dove deeper into his relationship with the old guy mm-hmm. um because they don't in the second oh, one, okay, right. but the second one has, I feel I felt the second one obviously went a little bit further in terms of what was happening and what he was doing, and how he was getting away with certain things or dealing with certain things, and it was interesting. I was listening to Bill Maher, Maher mm-hmm. on Joe Rogan, and you guys know my feelings on Bill Maher. Yes, I bitched him. about him. I just, I just don't like. I just don't like his brand that much, but I listened to a full, almost three-hour interview with him on Rogan, and actually, there was a lot of things that he brought up that I was like, okay, it's 
kind of changed my tune on him now that I've gotten to sit there and listen to him for a while. But he was talking about how we have so much content mm -hmm. that they're doing the whole, we have to shock you in the first half second, otherwise you're not going to invest time in this thing. So that's why you see a lot of TV shows that have a gruesome murder, for instance, and then it's like six weeks ago, and then it leads you up to it. They're trying to grab you as soon as you can because yeah. either are he brought up a good point. We either have the attention span of 30 seconds or we have it of three hours, but mm -hmm. we don't know, and it varies. And usually that's the shock that you need to get you to that three-hour, six-hour mark kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Interesting. So um, it, was, it was really good points all, like across the board. I was like, yeah, fuck, this thing's definitely going to die at one point. Awkward. Um, I almost just said say bye just in case it doesn't. Should we do Birds of Prey then first? That's probably the most prominent. No, no, we'll, we'll definitely, yeah. Let's, uh, let's do it. Anthony, let's talk about Birds of Prey. So bias from a DC fanboy here. I'd say as a movie like a six or seven i'm like leaning more towards six like i thought it was much better than i thought i went in with low hopes like i didn't even know it was coming out like i found out like two hours before i went to the movie that oh birds of prey is out let's go see that instead uh but it was just entertaining like that's just all i walked away from like it was what suicide squad should have been and this was kind of like the dceu's like guardians of the galaxy that just wasn't like suicide squad and was actually done well uh harley quinn was super fucking good the other people or whatever uh Ewan McGregor, easily best person in the whole movie. Like, Stole the show. He fucking did. I saw somebody <laughs> say he didn't portray the psychotic character enough, and like, I was going to slap the fuck out of them because I'm sorry. Like, I even talked to Pano, and Pano disliked the movie. Or he didn't dislike it. He just didn't like how it was super, like, feminist and shit like that. Sure. But, like, I said, that's kind of what the movie was about. Like, <laughs> you walked you in. Like, yeah, that's that's <laughs> the whole plot. It's called The Emancipation of Harley that's Quinn. That's why I didn't care enough mm -hmm. to listen like, that how it was a negative point. But he did it so well. And that black mask costume is fucking sexy like it is so nice wow sexy too uh, was it all white right no unfortunately it was black oh. yeah no i wish i wish it was white but it was pretty good like there's one issue like that you told me from the witcher and i noticed this was awfully done too because they did a time jump like she's narrating the story and there's like, this whole time this whole like 30 minute sequence where i had no idea if the event she was talking about happened before or after a certain moment hmm. and like afterwards it was cleared up I'm like okay this makes sense now but like it was just done poorly. The whole time you were kind of like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's also, it was kind of like Deadpool for DC because she was breaking the fourth wall a lot, but like Harley Quinn does that anyway, so it's not right. like she's they're copying him. But Does yeah. she do it in the comics? She does. Yeah. Oh, okay. Even, she has a TV show too where oh, cool. she does that crap. <laughs> but I thought, yeah, it was, I thought it was entertaining. I think it was worth a see. I don't know if it's a great movie. Like, again, I'm biased. So I don't want to say it's good. I, I didn't think it was bad. I will say I don't think it was bad. You had fun with it though. I had a lot of fun. Was it worth the high praise that it's been getting? Oh, I don't think it's worth high eighties, but like I'd right. say it's you no know, sixty to seventy. Like again Still for DC, range. like that's a, it's a solid. That's what they needed. Yeah. The one thing, Jared Leto isn't in it, but they're not like they didn't retcon Suicide Squad. They had one scene that was like very in your face, like oh, Suicide Squad is still a thing. Mm -hmm. Like this new one isn't going to retcon it. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, Batman was nowhere to see, be seen when all this havoc was going on in Gotham City. Mm -hmm. Like, even at night, too. Like, because some of it happened yeah. during the day, and it's like, okay. Yeah. But it should happen at night, and he was just nowhere to be found, and, like, no one really talked about him either. And you said that this was after Suicide Squad and most likely after Justice League, too. I believe it would be after Justice League. Yeah. That's why I, I messaged you last night. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's just fucking taking a break. But for 20 he years, like, all the shit that happened, why would he take a break after Justice League when, like, stuff was good for him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they almost lost everything in the world. He yeah. probably had a bunch of bruises. Didn't the Superman, timeline's a little sticky didn't Superman right now. choke the fuck out of him and throw him into BBS. a car? So is oh, Birds of Prey meant to be like a canon DCU film kind of thing? Oh, it's canon. Uh, this is very much a Harley Quinn movie with Birds of Prey as a subplot, mm. but like it introduces the Birds of Prey for their right. own like kind of shit in the future. But again, the title is called Emancipation mm -hmm. of a Harley Quinn. Like, yeah, it's meant to be her. No, that I understand. Movie. I'm just saying how it ties into like uh, the. The Justice yeah, League, League and that kind of stuff. Is so, it meant to do that? I believe so. Okay. Justice League, they didn't really mention. Okay. Suicide Squad, though, is definitely canon to this. Okay. So it makes sense. This follows Suicide Squad. Uh, yeah, but there was one more thing. It just, yeah, it has a lot of great payoffs for DC fans, like just to see live action shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to spoil it, obviously, but there's just like a lot of moments that were just like fun to see. Mm. And you're like, oh, that's so hyped to like just so cool to see it live action yeah. or better. Because I know there was like Black Canary was on CW, mm -hmm. but this was just like, you got to see it like big budget, not just kind of shitty. CW? Yeah, not shitty CW. 
kind of production. Mm-hmm. Overall, though, I was very surprised. But again, I went in with very low hopes. So that's a good way to go. Mm-hmm. I think at this point, it's almost like that. It's like just go into everything with low hopes. Um, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's more. Oh, no end credit scene. Also, good. Uh, there is one like there's a kind of like voiceover. It's not like it's a joke from the TV show, I guess, where she's gonna say oh. like, "Did you know Batman fucks bats?" Oh, weird. And that's yeah, that's it. Wow. But it gets cut off after. Did you know Batman? Boom. Interesting. Um, did I say the new Saw movie? No. The trailer. That looks fucking good. Very interesting. I think it looks very great. interested. I and think it looks Chris great. Rock was an executive producer too. Yeah, I found it so weird when I saw him because I was like, "Is that Chris Rock? Like, why is he in a he Saw looks, movie?" Yeah. He looks like. He looks different. He looks. Um, I don't want to be racist. Know. That's why I was like, "Am I being racist right now?" Or is that Chris Rock? Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, he he looks. I think he looks jacked. I think he looks a little more built, more cut. Yeah. And then the f- facial. He usually, he usually has a goatee. Remember? I guess. So yeah, he shaved yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And only has underneath. He just has the go the like the bottom yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah. the chin t the chi- the chin t. Yeah. I don't the, know what the, the fuck goat. that is. Uh, no, uh, that was surprisingly good. I like that. I I don't know. I, s- I said this in the chat as well. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to... It looked good because it didn't have torture porn. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that it doesn't go down the torture porn route. I have no idea what Samuel Jackson has to do with any of this. That's that's actually... I was, con- I was like very interested where he lies into all this. Yeah. If he ties it to a character that was introduced back at that's some point. That's a tricky so, situation, though, because then yeah. it's like, how are you going to explain your way out of this bag? That was the problem with the rest of the Saw movies. They just kept adding characters from the previous one that just so happened to be part of his syndicate. Mm-hmm. And they do it after the fact. That was just like, hey, I have an idea. How about we bring this guy to be the overarching thing for this? And and then it's just like, eh, lazy. Does anyone know if this is, like, canon? What is the Saw canon? Is. is every single movie canon? I guess so. I think I think we're kind of are they going to do a we're, Halloween? We're doing thing where ex- we're doing this. like a high expectation that all of them are supposed to tie with each other. They kind of do, um, but um, this is meant to be from the Saw. It says the Book of Saw. The Book of Saw. Yeah. So this could happen. I don't know exactly. I didn't read up on the plot or anything, but maybe this takes place after the events of the most recent one, mm-hmm. and someone wrote a book about it, and then Book of Saw, whatever. And it'll be interesting what to is see. What Death Note? What does the Book of Saw do? Just tells you the booby traps? Maybe it's... It tells you the entire the... saga of what went down. Because, like, think of how many people have throughout the years... But we know about the saga. I actually don't. I've, no, like, I've seen the people in that world. Oh. Like, in that Saw world, mm. like, the real world there, they're being told about this through the book. Saying, like, oh, who Jigsaw was, who their victims were, why he did what he did, that kind of thing. So it's basically, like... Um, Whatchamacallit, it's an autobiography, I guess you can say. Did he have any motives in the movies? Or was it all, his, all, his, all his thing was behind. Did you ever watch any of them? I've seen like It's been a while. But, it's, like, it I've all seen comes it, like, to do, few, the first few had everything to do with like him personally, like anyone attached, like he was got sick and that kind of stuff. And then throughout the times, he would just find people and like, like he'd basically judge them in a sense. Like he'd say, you do this. So in order to get out of it, you got to do this. Yeah, you're a drug dealer. Fuck you. You're going into this yeah. almost inescapable thing yeah. or you people are bad you'll have to work There's together and anything he any of his traps were you could get out but you had to give up something in some way like it's like a, a sacrifice to mm-hmm. something you know what i mean but the how much w- do you value your life basically and there's, what he there's there's one the where they had a group of people go and do one and if they had worked together that was this i, I saw that one yeah the saw see that thing, one so like, like that everybody. kind of stuff so it's on the moral high ground but he's just doing it in a very sick way He's asking you how much you value your life. And apparently not. M- most of them didn't mm-hmm. uh, really care for their lives much until the last second. Also, funny thing to add in. I know nobody watched his death note, mm-hmm. but they released a special one shot where this guy gets the death note and he sells it. And he's like putting it up for auction. And in the one shot manga, Trump ends up winning the bidding war. Like the states mm-hmm. gets it. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then the death guard says, if I give you this book, like I'm going to kill you because like you can't sell the book or whatever. Right. He said, OK, fine. Like I won't take it. But everybody will think I'm a saint because, you know, I'm not using a death note, but I have it in my power. Mm-hmm. Right. It was like the guy, it was literally, they never called him Trump, yeah. but like looked exactly like Trump. And it was hilarious. If it's looking a little brown, like a full football and has orange on it, you can pretty much bet it's going to be him. Are we happy Sam Raimi is on board or might be on board to direct Hell Doctor yes. Strange 2? What has Sam Raimi done since the Spider-Man? I don't know. He's done the Evil Dead. Ash versus but even Evil then, Dead like, he did. They want this to be a horror, a quote-unquote horror movie, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
like Spider Man Two, that one scene with Doc Ock and like the fucking doctors like area or whatever when like they're trying to like operate on him and yep. then all the metal arms come out. Mm. Yep. Like that shit was scary as a kid. Yeah. And even now it's still like not scary, but it's like, oh my and god. Evil Dead is his baby and that oh, is yeah. like some pretty awesome stuff. That scene with the goblin where he was screaming a- a- in that uh, burnt house, like mm-hmm. when he was wearing the thing, that was almost identical to a scene, I believe in the first Evil Dead, where like this old zombie thing just like creeped up into the camera and started screaming. Like he's good, man, and he could do it. And I, I when I saw when I read that I was like, fuck yeah. Like, good for you. I hope he does it. Now there are uh, rumors saying, was the Sp- Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and Morbius actually a mistake? Or was it? I, I'm thinking it's a mistake because I don't think, like, I don't think Doctor Strange's director was gone by that time that trailer came out, was he? No. Yeah. But it'll be a Say cool that point. Again? Unless Maguire. he was on his way out. Like, he's on in, in the trailer. In the oh, background, there's that, oh, like, yeah. PS4 Spider-Man shot saying murderer. And it doesn't make sense because that's not his suit. Right. Like, they're trying to connect as a... Tom Holland. Okay, interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to bring this up if it'll fucking let me. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I I was trying to I wanted to save this for now because we talked about the Fast Nine trailer. Yes. And I want to figure out the fuck Han has anything to do with any of this. Why is Han hype? Like I never Han. Understood that this either. is this is for Justin Lin. Okay, Han means so much to me because he was a character before Fast and Furious. And what else does he say? And then there was the Justice for Han Han hashtag that went around. Somebody asked me about Han and Deckard Shaw, says Lynn. I was like, wait, what? Shaw is at the barbecue in eight? Laughs. Really, I was so confused. One of the big reasons to come back was I felt like we needed to correct something. I still don't get what that means um, to any of it. And so all his only explanation is the fact that he meant so much, and he was before he took over the Fast and Furious franchise. I still don't get why the like how the fuck he got here. Also, his history was written twice. Tokyo Drift, the guy was pissed off because Han died because of uh, the DK at the time. Mm-hmm. And then the whole reason for, like we talked about last week, was because Deckard Shaw was supposedly the guy that actually decided to show up at the perfect time when they were drifting across Tokyo mm-hmm. to burn him. See that? I didn't mind that. that Stupid. So... Why? Of course it's stupid. Han How the fuck died? did he know that they know? How did he know that they were going to be there? Low Jack. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> like, Terrible. Seriously. <laughs> Read the what's room. going on. I don't know. He's, he's so Han now. died. Yeah. How? Twice, apparently, by two different people for but, some reason. Like, how were, were his deaths? He like, was burnt very in the car. Apparent he okay. died. In oh, Tokyo yeah. Drift. The car blew which, the fuck up. Tokyo Drift was the third installment, chronologically. Not it was it the second one, like, released? It was the third oh. one released, chron- like based on okay. release dates, and he died by car accident. It's fine. When they went back and we saw him in four, he was the first time he came back in? Five. Oh, yeah, Brazil. No, it was four. Was it, it four? Uh, Fuck, I don't remember. I can, anyways, so he came back in five. Yes, it let's was say, five. Let's say five. He was there for six. Mm-hmm. And, and seven, he was when he died. Seven is when he died, and that's where, after six is where Giselle, uh, Gal Gadot's character, mm-hmm. died. So then he goes, like, I'm finally getting to Tokyo. So, okay, we, we finally know the events of Tokyo Drift happen after this. Mm-hmm. And then in seven, it shows that Deckard Shaw was the one who did it and crashed his vehicle when they were escaping DK at the time. Even though we saw that DK was the one that flipped his car over. So if anything... No, it wasn't. Dude, DK didn't flip his car over. He 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 got run over by so another vehicle. So the third movie happens after the fifth or sixth one. Yes, after the sixth. I'm gonna research this thing. This thing. Is I'm telling you, BS. it wasn't DK who flipped his vehicle. There's no way that Deckard Shaw was also chasing them in a car scene that was filmed years before his character was even in, put into the film. They just used so it they to could, their advantage. The car crash happened the same way. It was just who it was did because it? of that race that happened. Okay, okay? it had nothing to do with but Deckard. You're Shaw. wrong that DK flipped his car. It was someone, it was another vehicle. Okay, but not Deckard Shaw's vehicle. And it wasn't a random you vehicle either. You don't know that. Sure, it was a random vehicle. He wasn't paying attention well, to what he was doing, we'll and he got he, hit. He was clearly paying attention. He's drifting here. He's Tokyo drifting. You're wrong on that, but either way. I so anyway, silly. They used Decker Shaw's vehicle as the one that crashed his vehicle, and then therefore kicks off what happened in seven and eight. Anyways, it's stupid. He should he should remain dead like most characters. So should. he's died twice, and now he's back. This is gonna, yeah, and he's probably gonna die he's again. He's died twice in his eyes, but. It's, 
the same time. But like, <sighs> it's the same time. He's died twice in the franchise. On screen, on screen, he's died twice technically. Why the fuck do they keep reviving people? No. Speaking or because well, is apparently. he that important? Of a, is he that good of a character? Like, apparently, he's, after, a, he's a fan favorite. It was a big fan favorite. Apparently, whatever happened with Hobbs and Shaw, everyone just happened to have this Justice for Han thing. So they found after that, hey, we're gonna start caring about this character that we really didn't care about before. Mm. He escaped. And join the Ninja Turtles. And then that's what happened, that's the why they're bringing him back. And for why some isn't reason. The Rock in this one? Because the Vin Diesel and The Rock don't like each other. Yeah. So they're just, The Rock is doing his own spin off. Yeah. yeah. He's on Vin Diesel's property. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, whatever, cool. whatever, whatever is The Rock's going to do. And that was a big do. piece of crap, by the way. So they drop one WWE I am, superstar. I am and very pick up happy. Cena. I'm more happy to see three more Fast and Furious movies than it, to ever see another Hobbs and Shaw. Which it is really money. funny for you, coming from you. I will say this: the best meme I did see was nobody saw Toretto's brother the entire time. He was there, but you couldn't see him. I thought that was funny. The whole idea of it is dumb because <laughs> yeah, he's never been mentioned. It's dumb, and it's is Cena dumb. playing that guy? I assume his brother. Okay, that's okay. yeah. Older, I wasn't sure for brother. some fucking reason. Um, it, it tracks. Who was I talking? Oh no. Uh, it wasn't James Gunn. I think it was James Gunn. Yeah. James Gunn apparently said that John Cena is one of the best impro- improvisers he's seen. It's like a quote he put out. Maybe. Maybe which I thought is. was super funny. I mean, their whole life is improvising. Like they, they're, they're wrestling, is like, true. They have to improvise Cena, all the I don't think has time. scripts. I think he's one of the very few that just goes out there and talks. Dude, I can barely do that on a weekly basis on a show with fucking notes. Well, I remember because uh, I, I was just watching this like one interview and he called out the rock because he doesn't have cena doesn't have a script and now they're just the rock but the rock had show notes written on his wrist and cena called him out in front of the live audience for having oh, the show yeah. notes and the rock was fucking genuinely heated with him afterwards because he fucking exposed the trash talk king live but john why would you do that <laughs> when it gets heated in the ring man you gotta fucking go like oh yeah it's gone. one like, might say that john cena left no stone unturned but a rock because he's the rock get it have you ever heard that I don't think no, anybody saw that coming. No rock unturned, but it doesn't work. It's no stone. You, you, you get what I'm saying. You get I didn't it, right? until you mentioned the rock. Have you never heard that term? I've heard the slang, but it didn't uh, apply at all. So th- Yeah, it did, because he left no stone untoined, and he made sure that he called out the rock. He didn't let shit just go. Yeah, you he were scrambling no, for uh, that. Was, yeah, it was. Anyways, that's, that's a true fact. We digress. <laughs> That is a true fact. Who knew? Um, apparently, the Indiana Jones 5 is not a reboot, obviously, because you have a very old fucking Han Solo. And by Han Solo, I mean... Indy. No. Indy, yes. Yeah. Very old, old Indy. I don't why is this stuff news? Like, I don't fucking Why are oh, people it's a Jones. so starved? Jones. <laughs> yeah, Indiana Jones. People are yeah. so starved for news, man. And like, it's like... Are you saying that because of us? No, not because of you. Like I'm just saying, oh. like actual news articles. Like what the fuck? Like, well, it's whatever they find. Like Cinema Blends are usually good for this. Collider is really good for this. Whatever's out there, people kind of want to know. And guess what? It helps us because where do you think we get it from? But I remember there's yeah. another one previously. It was super stupid. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was so like obvious what it was. It had something to do with Marvel. I couldn't remember what it was, but yeah. Hmm. Um, I'm really really curious as to what it means by unscripted special for that Friends reunion. I'm very curious as to what it means. I don't think it'd be improv. Do they ever improv any There's of the There's no way. They're each getting three to four million dollars for this special. And it's only one that much, special, though. right? Didn't some of them make like a million dollar per episode like previously? So the cool thing. thing about the whole Friends story is that they, yeah, they all petitioned to make the same amount. Because I think Jennifer Aniston was making way more than everyone else, right? Depending mm-hmm. on who's the, the Talk biggest about star equality. at the time. <laughs> well, and I mean, I think Jennifer Aniston was like already in movies then. There's something to do with it. Either way, yeah. they all were like, "We're not doing the show unless it's even across the board." That's Coolest fair. fucking thing. Like that's what you. That's that's awesome, mm-hmm. um, and rightfully so because mm-hmm. with that show, there is not one person that overshadowed can't either. be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you take one person out, you actually ruin the the show. I think that's be interesting. We should break that down. See what for other shows like Big Bang Theory, you had. Uh, you Sheldon can take Cooper. out Wall. You can take out Wallowitz's so, wife. Hold on, Sheldon Cooper, uh, Leonard, 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 and Leonard. Penny yep. made the most. Yes, those three made the most. And then you had your sub characters like Wallowitz and Kuthar yeah. and I think uh, Bernadette was yeah. in that tier as well. And then everyone else was underneath. I, I didn't know. watch the show too much, but I mean, I think that's I another did show. Like Big Bang Theory. No, at all. Well, I'd watch like I just wasn't funny. It was never funny to me. And oh. The laugh track was way overdone, 
and it just yeah, ruined the show for me because I was like, I'm not laughing, and you've played this laugh track know, 20 really, times yeah, the past some, five minutes. There's some good moments. No, no, no. It was a, it was actually like it was a good show, especially early on. Yeah. Um, and I think that was another one where I think outside of Wallace's wife, you could have taken her out, and it would have been business as usual. I think once they introduced Bernadette, I don't think not Bernadette. What's um? Yeah. Is that no? No. Bernadette. Sheldon. Oh, um, Amy. Yeah. Sheldon, I think Sheldon once Blake. they introduced Amy, like she was, I thought a perfect addition to it. Oh yeah. Like. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I thought it was like, yes. So you could have taken out other people and made sure that you kept Amy because I think that dynamic was was huge. Oh, yeah. So question then, because yeah. I'm on the final season of Parks and Rec. Mm, great show. And as I've been watching it, I don't think there's I don't think there's been a season I didn't like. Honestly, oh, wow. I don't know if that was just me. Yeah. And I was the show I was talking about too, because like they removed characters. Like they had, I forget their fuck. I don't know why I'm forgetting the name, mm. but like. What, the girl from The Office who played both. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. And then Jones. Chris. Yeah. Yep. They removed them. It didn't really affect the show at all. And it was but that was like, later in the, the season, though. It was like the last season that they weren't there. But yeah, I just I don't know. Parks and Rec, great show, yeah. actually. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Honestly, yeah. a yeah. bit more. Like, I think it goes Brooklyn and Nine Nine, Parks and Rec, and then The Office. Mm. No, The Office is definitely above. For me, I just never cared for The Office that much, honestly. <laughs> you never cared for The Office? Like, not that much. Like, I enjoyed it. It was entertaining, but like, I just never loved it. To the extent that everybody else did. I Wait till you work in an office, then you'll actually really love it. Perhaps. <laughs> no, even before I got into an office. Now that I do work in an office, yeah. it's actually quite funny. But no, I definitely put um, the office above Parks and Rec. Um, and I would put Brooklyn Nine Nine at the top there for sure. Seinfeld is still number one. It'll always be number one. I don't think any show will ever be able to top it. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's on Friends. <laughs> sorry, yeah, yeah. And I'm just curious because it says HBO an unscripted Max, special. Though. That's a lot. Three to four million a piece, though. But they're so be making bands. They, they thing, don't look, seem to be doing the equal payment for each of them. But look at SNL. SNL is unscripted for the most part. Like they have, they have a cue notes, and yep. they gotta follow. Like this is the overarching theme of this of this scene. Yep. And they'll practice it, and they'll, they'll do things. But for the most part, they're probably just trying to. It's just talking. But for like a reunion, right? Isn't it to like kind of like then... fill in gaps? <laughs> but it's been uh, it's been a long time since these like some of them have been in stuff. So I mean. Or some, you yeah. really got to be careful, and I'm, obviously they're going to take their time to film it before they release it and oh, do yeah. all the shit. Is it? But I'm just curious. Is it one episode? Just yeah, one I think special? It is one episode? Is it only like an hour? Yeah, it was hour. just like an hour episode, didn't it? Okay. Okay, I thought it was like a, a season. Yeah, no, I like I, I don't know. I think Unless they, it goes well, then they say sure, why not? I hope they don't. I, well, I don't know. Cause that'll be a false positive. You know, that'll be. A, like, I think a one-off. I don't. Well, I haven't seen Friends, but I think a one-off is probably what they've been aiming for because. Like some of them are larger than the show now. Like Jennifer Lawrence, does she really need to do Aniston, the friends? Jennifer reunion? Aniston. Aniston, yes. Lawrence, how dare you? They're both Jennifers, aren't they? No, no, not even close. No. Oh, does she need to do on. the show? Like she's Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. She is. Yeah. Like. Yeah, of course she needs to do the show. I think she's still successful. Sorry, like she, she doesn't does need things. to in the sense for money, but like. If she's not in it, forget but exactly. it. Exactly. I don't think they do a whole season because like, a whole like series. Because if one season happens, I don't think people are going to want two, and they're going to keep like, wanting to go and go and go and go. I'm they just, I'm just interested to see what they could pull off for just an hour and a half special at best. They need to do one episode and close the book on it. That's all they need. Six to do. seasons in a movie. Yeah, no. They don't even need to do a movie. I don't think you could sustain something that long. They're, the whole premise of the show was not built for a one-hour, two-hour special. It was built for 22 minutes or whatever of screen time with multiple storylines intersecting and coming to crazy conclusions and fun antics and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can... I'm actually... The more I think about it, the more I think this is a terrible idea. And they'll get a lot of views because it's just a friend's reunion. By virtue of it being a friend's reunion, people will watch it. Mm -hmm. But that's what I meant by a false positive. They'll just take that as, as oh, shit, people want this. It's like, no, they want it once. That's what they want. And all, what they really want is they want to go back to whenever they first saw the show to a time when they were more innocent and didn't have as com many complications in their lives and relive those moments because the show was there. That's what it means. That's so funny. Yeah, no. Um, Before we move on from HBO please. Max, so I want to add one more thing. That they have a f official like title for the Warner Bros. division, mm. Warner Max, which mm. will be producing all like the Warner Brothers TV shows and movies like for the DC. Like shit. Cinemax. I Warner don't know, Max. man. HBO Max. Like, Do we know what price point is for it yet? Because I'm actually genuinely very dollars. curious. 80. Million dollars? What did you say? I said one million dollars. Oh, fuck. No. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, the heck is it not? I could also just stream it. 
because you have to give you have to get basic crave and then to get hbo is an extra package on top of it okay, so, so you're probably streaming. you're probably close to like the hbo max on its own is probably like eight bucks and then you'll get if you get crave which has some hbo stuff already mm-hmm. uh that's probably like 12 to 12 dollars so you'll pay about 20 bucks a month which is on par with netflix if you get their highest like their premium mm-hmm. free ultra high death and multiple viewers and that kind of stuff you're probably on par with everything that way. Does HBO have Friends then? Is that who took Friends from Netflix? Yeah, I think. So. Well, I, I mean, not Netflix. CB, I think NBC had let them borrow it. Like that was a, the contract mm-hmm. with them. Yeah, so they're signing a new contract. They're signing a new. Yeah. And then they'll sign My new guess contract. is by the time the contract is up for Friends, then they'll release the HBO Max special. Mm-hmm. That would be good timing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Knives Out Two. I think we've already talked about it before, but there's our more articles coming on that is definitely happening. Twenty twenty two. New mysteries, new yeah. scenarios. Same Daniel Craig. Speaking of which, that James Bond trailer looked very good. I oh, forgot that to looks mention. Great. Um, and it'll make more sense that they're tying the whole thing together because they ch- did that last one and it failed. So now it'll make more sense that it's like, oh, you guys tried to tie the whole universe together because apparently it's everything that had to connect in that world. But at least now we know that you did it. So then in this one, we have a better premise to do it off of, hmm. which is the argument that you and I were having last time where I'm like, no, Spectre was totally fucking random because the first three movies before it didn't even mention that anything was connected. And all of a sudden, by the way, James, it's all connected. And that's what happened. Knives Out, though. Again, I told you so as I watched it. Again, yeah. great the second time. Like oh, There yeah. was that one like one line at the very start where the uh, guy was talking, like the old guy who died, who died. He was talking about, yeah, for Ransom, like, I fear he's not going to know the difference between a real knife and a stage prop. Mm. That's like, what oh, I remember. Yeah. That was the first time in a very like in a very long time of watching movies where I actually like was like, huh, the stage prop. And then it happened, and I remembered it mm-hmm. while I was watching it, not after. But yeah, but no, so yeah. good. And then there was like the one where you see the grandma because I noticed this too watching. She's like, "Oh, ransom, you're back already." And yeah. I caught, that. I thought that was weird. But then I'm like, "Oh, yep, like, yeah. he comes back. This whole timeline, mm. all this shit." I, I hope you've seen Knives Out. I have, okay, I have. good. Yeah. That During true. that movie, I felt like I was in the zone, mm. as in like I was paying attention to everything. I was like, "Oh, this, this, this." So when it came up, I was like, "Fuck yeah, fuck yeah!" Oh my god! Like I was. There's a lot of things going on, but it was like one of those things where. This is the this is the big difference that we had that argument about the Sherlock thing about finding something like or the murder on the Orient Express where you're following it, it's leading you somewhere, you're keeping the clues in the back of your mind, and then there's a payoff. Whereas in those other movies, comparatively, it's like there's nothing there, there's nothing there, and apparently everything tied together beautifully in a boat just to re- to finish the movie because we're running out of time. It's a huge difference, at least for me. There's a huge difference. The second you watched, though, I did like, like I said. picked up on all the hints. Like even when he yeah. went back and like it was like tying all these pieces together. Like You're supposed to, it all made sense. Like yep. good fucking job, Ryan. But mm-hmm. you were able to follow it, and it and, mm-hmm. and it but like it was through the whole process. But um, no, that's awesome. And also, I have two reviews I forgot to bring out. Uh, Uncut Gems. I finally saw it. I was on Netflix. Oh, pretty good. It's on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it's a Netflix original. It came out on Netflix after it was on theaters. Interesting. It came like last week. No, two weeks ago. Uh, It was good. It was a little chaotic. There was a lot of scenes where there was a lot of crosstalk and people were yelling. Like and it was like I I don't know what the fuck's but going on. It's about on. a gambler, correct? It's about a guy that gets himself involved with a lot of shady people and Kevin Garnett, and then he's trying to win money to pay people back but keeps fucking doing degenerate shit or whatever like keith stanfield is in it like that dude's been in everything this year he's awesome was adam sandler good like he was very good did he like kind of push past the comment like the oh no traditional was, like comedy totally routine and, like you actually bought his performance yeah there was maybe one scene uh towards the end that i was just like i don't know if i buy this and it was during a really poignant scene like this would have been his like quote-unquote oscar scene but i think he had way more other ones before that it moved really fast and it jumped around a bit, so it was kind of hard to like figure out where you were. Mm-hmm. And then, I'll, but it ended pretty amazingly. Like the way it ended was just like holy fuck. Like, so I don't think that it was an Oscar-worthy performance. Um, I think the only reason that people were saying that is comparatively to the things that he's done, mm-hmm. you could consider this his Oscar attempt. But compared to all the other performances this year, not really quite there. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's just me fucking saying it. A guy who knows shit about shit but like i don't know like he was good in it he was acting like his heart out and you can tell was adam sandler the one who said if you guys don't like this performance i'm gonna like make a super ironic shitty performance just like a spite for you no i'll make shitty movies and netflix signed him on another four movie deal um and he's just gonna make ridiculous movies that people are gonna eat up 
because that's what uh, people do. Well, that's what he is. Like, on, like love him or hate him, like that's the character that people want to see him as. Like, for mo- he's most doing parts. what he wants, man. Mm-hmm. He's doing what he wants, and if we don't want to watch it, don't know what we don't want to watch it. But I'm like, I'm one of those people that lives in the past where I remember his old movies, like the Billy Madison's, the Happy Gilmore's, and I love them because of that. And now it's like you're seeing it, and I'm like, eh, I don't like this. Hmm. That being said, though, anybody watching me watch, let's say the Water Boy or Happy Gilmore, Water those Boy's ones, uh, an older adult would be like, "What the fuck are you guys watching?" Like, you know Greatest what I mean? Movie like, movie ever. Oh, I remember this guy from SNL, and he was really funny. What the hell is he doing? Sounding like his mouth is about to fall off while he's trying to hold it together in the Water Boy, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, two shows. So wait, One Cut Gems was one. I started watching Ragnarok. How's that? I enjoy it quite a bit. It's a Norwegian mm-hmm. show, and the town that it's set in is called Ida, which doesn't actually exist except in North, Norse mythology. Oh, okay. Oda is actually the real place that they filmed it in. Hmm. I don't know what it is Ida about... Ida Oda. I don't know what it is about these foreign shows, but I think because they have access to such beautiful landscapes, the cinematography is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. They have natural backgrounds that just oh. is there for them. They don't, have to, <laughs> they don't have to try hard at all. It's so good. Like, yeah. And no, this one is really good, and it doesn't really, like, it takes its time, but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like, the second the thing opens up, things start happening, and you yeah. start getting in. And it's eight episodes, six episodes, sorry, 45 minutes apiece. Oh. Is Nailed it, it. You think it's meant to have more? Where did you watch <laughs> this? It's on Netflix. Oh, is it? I, I have two it. episodes left. I haven't finished it. Oh, okay. But I'm on episode four, and there's two more left. And so, this isn't a full, full review, but it's, it is it is enjoyable. It's fun. I'm a huge fan of Norse mythology. I'm... I don't know. I have no very few people that can't say that it's not intriguing, and mm-hmm. it's really intriguing how they're doing it. They're playing with lore a little bit, but who doesn't? I mean, Marvel pretty much did everything wrong with the lore, except for some of the names. Um, God of War also took its own liberties, but I think it was a little bit more truthful. Who knows? Um, this one also did some stuff. It's interesting because the char- the main character we follow, his name is Magni, and in the lore, Magni is the son of Thor. Mm-hmm. But Magni is not the Magni that you think. He's not a son of Thor. So it's not that obvious. Well, it's like you think it's obvious, but it's not. Either way, how they kind of bring it about is how things come together. Yeah. Um, because if you s- haven't seen the trailer, don't know the show, I don't want to spoil a thing for you. Yeah. Either way, it's very good. Now, I recommend it. question for you. I don't know if it'll go into spoiler territory, but you're saying the son of Thor is also named Magni. This guy happens to also be named Magni and has the power of... I didn't say anything. No, no, but from the trailer. Oh, you've seen the trailer. I've seen the trailer. Yeah. So, y- yes, but he's not Magni. Uh, as far as I've gone, yeah. he's not this. He's not a son of Thor. It's something different that I haven't figured out yet. Interesting. But it's really cool how they discover things. Yeah. Um, some of it does move a little bit too fast. In that, like, we've gotten from here to here, and it's like, oh, it seems a little unrealistic how quickly that came together. But. It's like minor stuff, at least stuff that wouldn't bother me. Interesting. Um, so yeah, if you have, I'm haven't, definitely gonna watch it. Yeah, look, you yeah. should. And it's cool because the fictional world of Ida. I don't know the full description, but apparently it was the last known section of humanity where the gods existed with the humans. And then apparently, this is the description in the show, is that it was the last place that the villagers never gave up their religion to the gods and the giants to christianity mm. so it's like this connection like pure it's like this jump off point to the old world of mm-hmm. the norse gods and stuff mm. um so yeah it's it's pretty good i'm enjoying it and it's like it's super interesting uh i got one more thing do you guys have anything uh the jesus rolls trailer it looked fine it was okay i don't know if i'm gonna be too into it to be honest Did i you like, like the big lebowski i yeah, I like most people. It's it's a such and, a good movie. And the the Jesus character was pretty awesome in it too, for sure. So I'm just interested how they can have the spin off and stuff like that. But I mean, I saw the trailer; it looked good. Um, it's fine. Yeah, it's be very interesting. I feel it's going to have a Jack Sparrow issue. Yeah, Jack Sparrow was only supposed to be a side character, and he was a great side character. Then they started to make the movies about him. It fell off the rails completely. Mm. Yeah, like. It did. It, it like th- there was too much Jack Sparrow, so Jesus' character in there was actually really funny and interesting, but this might be too much. So when did the Big Lebowski come out? Because I've never seen the 90s, Big Lebowski. The 90s? Yeah, I, I'm I'm just interested on the timing. I mean, they probably almost timed it perfect. Let's say the years. Nineteen ninety eight. 
Well, that's not that bad. I thought it was going to be much older. So I wonder if the years he served in jail is about right for him to be out now, Maybe. which is what the show sh- starts with, like, or what it looks like is that he's coming out of jail and whatever. I'm very upset they never used the Gypsy Kings version of Hotel California in this trailer, though, because that was like his theme song. His mm-hmm. introduction in Big Lebowski is one of the greatest character in- introductions ever. It's so good. And that Hotel California version from the Gypsy Kings the is better than the hotel, like, than the original Hotel California. Yeah. But his yeah, it, that opening is so good. You should see it. I think you'd like. I don't I'd say know it's if you'd comparable, like it. not better. It's comparable. I think it's better personally, but that's just me. Um, what else we got? I didn't look into the rock star co-founder and uh, writer leaving thing too much, but maybe. No, I didn't look into it either. But I mean, it's crazy that he's leaving. Mm-hmm. It's uh, more of a that's more of a snapshot news thing that he's stepping yeah. down and stuff like that. And like you know, he's been behind games. For how long, right? Writing them, Red Dead, GTA Five, all of that, like yeah. in Rockstar is no joke. Yeah. Rockstar like six is even no in the joke. horizon? Have they even like oh, I know it's six isn't getting made. Oh, okay. You don't think so? No, it is. They oh, just it haven't is. announced it. Yeah, like there's so but, many rumors but about like, it. But like they've done a GTA five amazing. was like the most profitable like oh, p- it's literature so book. Is, but they, you know what? Game of all they've time. provided so much for players and they stuff. They still like. do. And mm-hmm. most of those add ons are free. It's just they have to keep playing the game, right? Every add on's free except for the money. And they're actually releasing two mil this upcoming week for free oh, for sure. online players. See, like they've they've been the smartest with that game. Like mm-hmm. they've built on it. What well, survived seven years? No, you don't agree. Uh, the opening of GTA Five's online was a disaster, okay. and it wasn't until a year or so after okay. that it ended up turning. Being it took good. like yeah, no our GTA Five okay, online did suck for like yeah, first it was a little rough at the starting point. Again, I didn't start it. I didn't but, start playing, but I could yeah. imagine from what you were telling me how they fun. released this, how they released that, mm-hmm. and I and I've been seeing that now that I follow them on social media, you mm-hmm. see oh update here's a new feature for GTA Five like just that alone that model they created mm-hmm. and. Um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey kind of followed that too. Everybody did with yeah. doing that, and it was smart. It's well, Call great. of Duty does too now. Call, Call of Duty, Duty was a big fucking yeah. cash cow, and now they're releasing free DLC maps. Well, what did yeah. they, they they said they made more money? I I, I don't know if I shared that. They, they made they, more they money. Made more money now than they did before with loot boxes, yeah, and like which is money. fine. If people want to spend it in game, that's fine. Don't hide it behind loot boxes yeah. and gambling systems. That's that's always been my issue. Oh, I agree. Um, I so one of the mobile games that I play uh, is called Marvel Strike Force. And I don't put any money RNG into it. RNG sucks. Uh, yeah, These I, games are awful. They are. But I don't invest any money on them. I have them on the side. When I want to play hurts. them, I want to play them. But one of the YouTubers that plays it, he did a roll on one of the mechanics that they have in there. $5,600, and he ended up getting nothing. Yeah. Whales. Nothing. Oh, like nothing of substantial use for fifty six hundred dollars, I think he said, or five hundred dollars, whatever it was. It was a lot of money. No, it was in the thousands. So he ended up buying thousands of dollars. A lot of YouTubers get paid to oh, do yeah, that. For like, sure. Yeah. So the, there's some I'll that have spent like thousands and thousands, like tens of thousands of dollars. Well, I play Dragon Ball Legends, which is pretty much the same deal. It's RNG, like you summon and you play online. Yeah. And it's it's actually proven where newer players in this game have better luck to pull the better characters than like someone like me who's been playing for like over a year mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter because i still get the characters but like it just <laughs> if you're a new player like into any game i don't know if it, it probably works for all rng games because they want to hook you with the hype characters you probably downloaded mm-hmm. the game for it's just fucking tough and it hurts man because you get burnt and you have like long three month streaks not getting jack shit and you grind and grind and grind and it goes for nothing well and that's why you don't make it a focus right like I don't make it a focus. I play daily, like just like log in daily, get my reward. Yeah. And I do too, and mostly it's like on my breaks at work, mm-hmm. just something to do. Uh, I got one last topic. Um, it's really funny because it's almost been a year since my, to me, really funny rant on Brie Larson, and it seems like it's all coming around to bite her in the ass. And the reason why I think it's hilarious is that apparently for someone who's extremely quote-unquote woke they're not woke enough and so the petition i mentioned last week was to remove brie larson as captain marvel but what i didn't see is why Mm -hmm. and the reason is is because they're wanting her to step down to have monica rambo be the new captain marvel because they want a i think they want they said one of them is her stepping down for a black gay character or a person of color who's also gay so the criteria is they have to be a person of color, 
and they have to be gay. I'm pretty sure they but have I, Indian but Miss Marvel are like no, uh, what they do on the Ms. show. Miss sure. Marvel mm-hmm. is Camilla Khan, but Mi- Captain Marvel was Monica Rambeau after Marvel. So Marvel was a guy first, then Monica Rambeau, who was supposedly the little girl in Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. And I think there was like a list of all of them, and then Carol Danvers. Let's remember the Captain Marvel as a comic has been rebooted a bunch of times because no one's been able like no one's wanted problem, it even yeah. when it was Marvel like nobody really cared for it it's the weakest Marvel title like it there. is like even now like nobody buys it which oh, is yeah. probably why they've tried to make her the strongest person to be like oh this is the strongest person ever by our comics right yeah. Story. so Story. last year I got on a bitch rant for about half an hour which I won't do now um, about thanks Anthony it was uh, 30 minutes, man. That's true, it was. Like, not even a lie. It, yeah, um, because she decided to call out white people. White, She's white. White males. White males. Uh, f- white male 40-year-olds or whatever. She wanted to make sure that no white males were in her press junkets, just people of color. She didn't even bother to see how many people of color are actually doing press junkets. Maybe ask that question first before you call for things. Anyways, she wanted to be the wokest person ever. The movie came out, and it was I hated it, and I hated it a lot because... All of the stuff that she was trying to do by making the MCU about her, they did in the movie. Let's just make everything on her. Now, because she's put herself on a thing of, oh, I'm the wokest person in the room because of all of her bullshit back then, it's coming to bite her because the thing about woke culture and super wokes is that there's somebody that pretend that thinks they're woker than you are and they're going to eat you alive. And you know what? It's happening now. I don't think anybody should sign a petition to get rid of her. I think lately that she's just been, I haven't heard anything. No, she's just been chilling. She's been chilling. She's been doing whatever she wants to do. She's been doing her movies, all of that stuff. Good. Same with most of the actors and actresses out there. I haven't heard much. Now, Joaquin Phoenix was saying something about at the BAFTAs that apparently people of color aren't welcome. And then everybody of color was like, oh, this man knows what's going on, knows what's going on. Like, I think that is just Silly. It's such a bland statement because, like, literally especially anybody, when he's winning, he's got the award, and now you're going to go up here and say that you're not welcome. Like, do it outside. You could make that statement, and people will be supporting you exactly. Of it doesn't matter who makes a statement. Yeah. It's just like such a bland statement to get. I'm not calling him out on lying or whatever. I'm just saying, like, it's not that. But it big doesn't a, seem like it's something that he would do. Like, I don't know. It's almost like he's felt bad for winning for doing such an amazing performance in a movie, and. Like better best performance I've seen all year. But like not even but to be like rude, but were there any like people of color that were, like I don't I know it's I don't know. a statement that like they were, they weren't, but like were there any that were actually like very good performances? No idea, no idea. But it could be the issue. I'm not saying it's not. I'm yeah. just <laughs> putting the question out there. But what's funny is that now, like Brie Larson was doing that shit last year. She's not doing it now, and then she's being called on it, and they're at like they're making her step down. Which, by the way, one of the people that makes the decisions at Marvel for casting and stuff is a female too. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. And yeah, they're gonna what? They're now they're gonna force her to to oh. prove how woke she is. As soon as you sent that, the first thing that came to mind was the Green Goblin saying, "No matter everything you've done for them, eventually they will turn on you." There you go. And that's the stupid thing about ideologies like that. Any ideology that goes to the extreme, it eats itself up. It tears itself apart, and it spits itself out, and it eats its own. Ouroboros. That's what's so fucking stupid about the whole goddamn thing. And I'm glad it's happening to her so she can realize how dumb it is. And anybody that does this woke bullshit, they should have the same thing happen to all of them. Well, just the, ca- the cancel culture is so stupid because it's literally just a group of bullies going around trying to make positive change, but they're literally just being equally as toxic. They're, they're being fascist. More, exactly. More they're yeah. extremists. And extremists, yeah. no matter what it is, yeah. are bad. That's mm-hmm. why it's not a line. People like to think of it as a line. It's actually a circle because when both points go to the extremes, it ends up divulging into himself and turning into the very thing. Yeah. Also, most of the people in the quote-unquote woke side have money. Mm-hmm. Most of them are white. Most of them are men. And most of the, me- the white men with money are just doing it to get in the girls' pants. Mm. It's true, okay? So, I again, I echo what I said last week, which is Brie Larson should not step down. No. Fuck the petition. Keep doing a movie. Hopefully it's better than the dumpster fire that was Captain Marvel, and it goes on a path of, hey, this is for everybody. It's not about you. And hopefully this is a lesson to a lot of people where it's like, well, wait a minute. She was super woke last year, and apparently she's not woke enough. It's not that she's not woke enough. It's that you guys need to stop using that term, as I need to stop using that term, and stop canceling people. Yeah. 
Because again, especially like for Brie Larson, I'm sorry, she literally did nothing wrong for these people to like turn on her out of nowhere. She did everything that they would have been calling for. Exactly, Every, and that's all, all ten so of them that are going to be bitching online about it. Like that's the thing, and they're turning on her and asking for her to step down. First of all, we don't even know if Monica Rambeau was actually gay. Let's put that into perspective because I don't think she was. I looked through Wikipedia for a while and I couldn't find anything like that. She was just badass superhero that got her powers from Marvel, the some fucking shit. Mm-hmm. And so, first we don't know if she's gay. We do know that she's black, but why does they have to be black and gay? Why can't she just be black? So then, what's wrong with just black females? Do they have to be gay? And then you could just, the, the more you keep going and going with it, it's just like, oh, you guys are ridiculous. Don't even follow your own rules. And you'll start pushing more and more people out until there's one person left in the room that is going to be sitting there yelling by themselves. Bunch so, of clowns. Bunch of clowns. Actually, also to just relay this one point, because I just thought about this too. Like Birds of Prey, like the whole like lead cast, diverse cast. They had black, uh, Asian descent. They had, I don't know if she was... She had a One Brooklyn accent. I think she was Mexican or something. Was, I don't know, but like uh, either she's either the, the old Spanish the older, or she's, yeah, she's yeah. or she's Hispa- or Portuguese. I don't know. One of the two. Mm-hmm. I've seen her Latin. before. Yeah, she's <laughs> of Latin descent. Of Latin descent. Also, one final thing I forgot to mention too. Birds of Prey was rated R. Mm. I totally forgot that, but like, oh my god, it hits you in the face. Like, oh really? There are like not poorly done. There are such violent fucking scenes and it's like cringy oh, like to watch violence rated r oh violence swearing like she goes off yeah that's fine also i want to say one thing i noticed last night too is i've never seen a superhero movie like birds of prey like it was super fucking unique and that's why i like that's it's good a, it's a villain well it was, that is it was true too i was kind of like anti-hero because she wasn't really i don't know she wasn't really wreaking havoc on like innocent people it was more like villain versus it was like john wick three i assume where like people are going after assassins her. versus assassins yeah, like they're just kind of fucking going that's pretty cool. I like that premise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm still excited to see it. Mm. Um, but anyways, yeah, I just thought it was fitting that this whole petition for Brie Larson thing has happened. I, I've just seen it now, and then I went on YouTube to go see if there's more information. Uh, Rogan was talking about it on his. He has this guy named Andrew Doyle. It's really good. I'm halfway through. It's a great episode. Um, but I don't know. Well, I see all these petitions online, and like I even saw one today saying, like, petition to remove Justin Trudeau from office. Like, let's sign it. It's like, you know what, guys? It's not going to do Stop with petitions because it's not, it literally does nothing. Like, I don't care. I'm sorry. It does jack shit. You can cry all you want. The Snyder Cut fans know this personally. You can cry as much as you want, but at the end of the day, shit doesn't happen. Like, it might happen. Who knows? But, like, just do it. The only petition or anything that actually worked was the Sonic one, I believe. Well, that wasn't a petition. I that, that was just people were bitching oh, yeah. them out on Twitter. Yeah, that was just an outcry. Um, yeah, and even the petition that I signed to get a Deadpool statue in our hometown. Yeah, that sucked because that didn't that, happen. It had a bunch, but then the uh, mayor was like, "No." But let's be fair, honest. Like, it's, it's fair it's, enough. It's realistic. No, it's not fair it's not, enough. No, no, no. He Shouldn't was right. Yeah. we're not going to spend a bunch of the taxpayers' dollars for a fucking mercenary, mercenary statue. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been dope as fuck to see it. Like, if they were going to ask for like ten bucks from each person, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'd give ten bucks for that." 20, maybe. 50, no. Well, at the end of the day, if it's crowdfunded, who gives a crowd? Put it See, in there. that's what it should have been. But then it's uh, getting the permit to put it somewhere. In Parks that, and Rec, in let's that, go. No, in that, it would have to go in that park next to Mosaic Stadium. It wouldn't have to. That's where they wanted it. Oh, that's where it should. Then they would have to, but they would need permission to do that. You can't just put whatever you want anywhere. I understand that. Oh, okay. I understand that. I understand that. I understand. I understand that. That's it. That's all I got. Um, oh, did you guys see Brooklyn Nine? I haven't seen it, but it right. came. Yesterday. No, I haven't. I want to watch it. I might. I don't know if I want to watch it week to week, but I haven't. I've only seen the last season once through, so maybe I'll rewatch the like season six and then like start. I think watching I might it. watch it week to week. I'll try to. I won't. I'm gonna wait till it's all out. It's I'm better. Like honest, Brooklyn Nine is one of the shows that I tried watching like season five week to week, and it was like you know what. It's funny, but it's not that funny. Where it's like better just to like binge it all through and like well, this one is, go. Well, this is good because you get two episodes at least. Mm-hmm. But uh, past that, yeah, you're waiting week to week. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's all I fucking have. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Mm-hmm. We done? Yep. Are we done? I got pee. Are you done? Yeah. You have to pee. I've been. Dr- I think I'm over a hundred ounces of water right now. Today. That's pretty it's good. Like just gotta be Peralta careful. Peralta over here, like, like this is water. I would really need ginger ale. Ginger ale. <laughs> um, ginger ale's good. I know it's actually. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of the F-Word Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, G. I said that in the beginning, so I'm going to try to restart this. You can follow me on Twitter at the F-Words G. You can email us at the F-Word Podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts Nowhere. That's dead. 
Fuck, I keep saying that. <laughs> Make sure you what follow is dead man the F Word Podcast on Instagram <laughs> and on Facebook. Um, and the Lazy Canadian on Instagram. And until next time, I'm G. It's your boy, Anthony. It's Vass. And we're out. <laughs>